Okay, I got everything beveled, lifted, backgrounded, like I had said. You can really kind of see now the depth that I was talking about. The shadowing from lifting it overcasts onto the skull and so on the background as well. And if you can see just how deep those are you can like over here on the edge by my finger right here you can really see and inside the skull and in the nose just how much of an area is underneath those edges that's what i'm talking about with depth sometimes it's a little tricky it's a pain in the butt but it, slow you go man and you'll get it i mean this has taken me a few hours now dealing with my little brats but, like I told you, the teeth, part of the teeth have started to disappear a little bit because of me tooling and it's pushing it back because I have the tape on it to keep it from spreading. And it has, that leather has to go somewhere when you push it. So whatever impressions you have, it starts to lighten them up. So what I've done is come in here and I got ready to start putting in some of the little details. Like around the nose, the little cavity here, which is, believe it or not, an inset <laughs> in the bone on an actual skull. So one of the greatest things that you people could have is a reference. Say hello to Boner. Hi, Boner. This dude, I have drawn reference from him so many times. Everyone always asks me, how did you get so, so damn good at drawing skulls? Because for years, it's all I ever drew. And I can draw one in my sleep, many different ways, angles. It's because I relentlessly studied the skull. I've got hundreds of pages of different angles printed out, different positions, with the, with the jaw closed, jaw open from the side. And this one is just a $7 Halloween skull. And it's really cool because you can take the jaw off. And it you can really just check him out and study the way the bone curvature is. The way the skull fissure plate growth plates are. Which is what are these little cracks are. Or the plates that allow the skull to grow as you do. That's why you have them there, and they everyone forgets to put those damn things in. I think it's a must for me, but I am a very detail-oriented person. So, study a skull. Study hundreds of pictures of them all the time. You want to get good at something? Repetition, 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 repetition. That's it. Just with, like with anything, you know? I mean, it's, it's just practice makes perfect. Now, some of the details in the skull <laughs> that I was starting to put in that I was telling you about, as I told you that I was not going to do anything to this because this is a crack and a fissure. Right there. Okay. Now, you can see that I faintly have the line down the center, just like the skull. Okay. And then down here, I was getting to it. I used the ball end of the stylus. And I'll come in and I'll put a different way to it. But you got to make sure that you follow. See how it goes to the tooth up? I try to do shit correctly. But I try to be as anatomically correct with stuff when I can, unless I'm doing a new school piece. Then it doesn't matter. Then it's what you fancy. Okay, and uh, the brow right across. That is not a solid line. I do it in some of my drawings for tattooing because in tattooing it adds structure. But you can also achieve the same thing with just a shadow line, which is what we call it in tattooing, which is basically what your modeling spoon will do for you as well. I don't know how well you can see that. 
but you can see it faintly. Maybe if I pick it up, you might be able to see it. Yeah, see, there you go. Different angle. Just barely put it in there. Now, here's the other thing. <coughs> I told you I used my favorite beveler. Okay? Then I went through, used the lifter. Okay? Then I went through, did the backgrounder on all this backgrounding stuff. And here I faded the pressure of my tap out from hard to soft, barely touching. This line here inside the socket, I drew with this thing. Just barely went along, made the line, and then just stamped this in without a cut line. What that does is it gives you a different line. I hate to say softer line, but it does. Because what this does is it'll push and pressure-wise push that leather down and it'll cause, you can't see it on, on the phone, but in person you can see tiny stretch marks in the leather. Because you're forcing the leather down that's not cut. So that will never go away. Never. I don't care how long you soak it in water, that'll never go away. These cuts with a knife, if you oversaturate it when you case the leather, they tend to rise a little bit. And a lot of people say, no, they don't. No, no, no. That's a myth. Bull crap. They do. Because I don't know how many times I've had to go back and re-bevel and stamp the edges so they stay down. That's why I do this trick. Everyone says, case the leather all at one time so you don't get watermarks. That's a bunch of BS. I've never had problems with that. So I'll use this nifty little invention. And I'll just dip in water. Wipe the excess off. And wherever I want to play, I'll come in and paint. And you can physically see it saturate. Get a little more. Come in. See, that's a little too much. I'm stupid. Blah, blah, blah. A little too much now I have to wait for a while to do that but you can come in and you can just lightly paint the area you want Put off to the side grab your fancy little tool again okay the dot real simple this is detailing this is what a lot of people miss in their stuff and it would even though it looks good this would just take it a little further See, you can dot it, or you can dot and pull. You can tap. You won't be able to see it now, but once it dries, you'll see it. Same thing with some of the other stuff in there. You know, you can come in and put striations in here, like scratches, all that good stuff. Like right here at the end of that eye. What I did is I come through with this modeling spoon, just like this, and I rub right along that edge. Nice and soft. And the more you rub, it gives it a burnished tone to it. Because friction heats leather and then it gets, it changes color. So you'll be able to see how it's going. And you come in here with that. This, I do it this way, that way. I don't get too deep of impression from tooling. Which I know a lot of people do, but I just kind of figured some of this stuff out on my own. Leather work is very secretive, just like tattooing. I really wished it wasn't that way, but people always think of it as, well, if I show you my tricks or my tips, you're going to steal my damn money. Man, piss on that. Quit beating a, a greedy Gus. Help people out. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? But you can just come in and do all kinds of little deals. Just fade it out nice and clean. But always have a good reference. So you can always look back to like, yeah, okay, I think that would look cool. But it's not quite correct. But, I mean, if you don't care, I don't care. But you just want to just nice and soft and slowly want to come in. Mark out some of your lines. And then, you know, just 
the deeper you want it, the harder you push and the more you go over it. And you keep it at a steep angle and your spoon will line it out. And if you want it to fade, you release your pressure and you just slightly fall off of it. And then if you got any marks, you can always just rub them out. But that's just some of the things that you can do. And like around the nose, you get it a little bit wet. Let it dry, like I got this too wet, and you can see this is starting, this area here is starting to come back. You know what I mean? And if it gets flattened down, you can take the spoon right back in here, clean it up, lift it nice and slow and easy, and push, push. Get it in there. Get your ridge back. Get your definition. Form it. I wish it was that easy tattooing because I could get so cool ass effects, but nature of the beast. All right, the teeth. Oh God, I hate doing teeth, but we'll get to that later. But I'm going, like I showed you, I'm going to come in here and I'm just barely going to get that damp. I'm going to come in and just do some shadow lines and detailing and, and follow the ridge of the nose and you know what I mean? Just kind of like come up where it's at and just lay them in nice and soft. If you don't go too hard with it, you can always buff it out, you know? And don't be scared to turn your piece to work with you because if you don't, it'll work against you and then you'll get mad and destroy leather. I've done it numerous times. Wife gets so mad at me for costing us hundreds of dollars for ruining leather. But hey, get over it.